I want to turn over to this panel who can really shed some light on how things are looking, what is the latest thinking and, and, and opportunities. So Mark Constance chairs the Resilience Measurement Technical Working Group that's hosted by the Food Security Information Network. And Mark, I know a lot of people are really interested to hear what's coming out of this group. And so if you could walk us through the latest thinking, products, and plans, that would be great. Very good. Okay. Good afternoon, and, and thank you, John, for that, for that introduction. Uh, as a preface to my, the comments I'll make, um, I, I would like to, to speak, um, rather as a preface to, to my response to, to John's question, I would like to offer some general comments on, on measurement as an effort that is, is meant to produce evidence-based claims and, and support decision-making. And I think it's important because these really help frame uh, the, the existence of the Resilience Measurement Technical Working Group. And so let me begin there with some introductory comments on measurement as a background. And I would say this, regardless of the aims of measurement, and there are many, and not all of them hallowed or, 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 uh, or uh, necessarily should be revered, but there are many, but regardless of, of the aims of measurement, I would say this, that the integrity of the data obtained in measurement practice um, really stems from four technical ambitions. Precision and accuracy, explanation or explanatory power, parsimony and utility. And these are the drivers of, of sound measurement. And those drivers become particularly important when you have a new construct or something that needs to be measured that has, has not been around for a long time and for which there are not conventions of, of, of measurement. And this is the case with, with resilience. And um, so I want to add one more to that list, and that is standardization. Uh, because standardization is what allows us to communicate with, with, with each other, with the various uh, communities that work on development, whether they're implementers, uh, M&E staff, policymakers, other people working on strategic issues to, to alleviate the problems of, 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 of poverty and, and food security. Uh, it's important to temper the standardization element, and I'll soon transition right in, into talking about the technical working group, but I'll say one more thing. Standardization is, is vital because it allows communication. It also allows people external to our work to determine whether or not we're making progress. However, that standardization element needs to be tempered with the realities of, of the contextual demands of practice settings. So I think we need to think about uh, context-sensitive standardization. In recognition of resilience is, is relatively, though not entirely new, as John pointed out, relatively new, and for which you don't have standardized practices, the uh, Food Security Information Network, among the variety of things that it's doing, uh, decided to form now, just about a year ago, the Resilience Measurement Technical Working Group. That is a group co uh, comprised of 20 people who are from, from NGOs, John being, being one, uh, from international and national agencies, uh, from regional and from regional partners as well. And uh, that group is, is working very closely on trying to advance uh, resilience measurement. And I'd like just to read to you what, what a few of our challenges are that we're responding to. And the three tasks of immediate importance, though there are a range of them for resilience measurement, the three tasks are framing the challenges of resilience measurement. And for this, we're, we're, uh, we have produced a Principles of Resilience Measurement document, which is released in, in January. Uh, we're also articulating a common analytical model that highlights the points in a causal chain for resilience from which the set of needed indicators could be specified. And there's an important linkage here to uh, theories of change um, and to uh, linkage between theories of change and causal causal modeling. And thirdly, producing technical guidance on operational aspects of selecting, constructing, and reviewing resilience measurements. Um, the other points I'd like to make here in, in, in the time that I have, I'd like to briefly highlight at the list of uh, providing with something that sounds like a laundry list, and I apologize for that, but these are important concepts. I'd like to briefly highlight seven of the key characteristics and priorities for resilience measurement that have been identified and are being refined by the technical working group. The first I would focus on is the definition of, of, of resilience, and John Hodnott referenced that. It's, it's the definition that we're working on, working with in the technical working group, where resilience is viewed as a dynamic relationship among well, um, for well-being states, shocks, and capacities, and looking at that relationship. And the measurement of resilience, therefore, requires indicators that enable one to assess changes in observed outcomes over time in the face of shocks. Uh, secondly, detailed and accurate measurement of shocks. There has been a, a number of sessions here focused on that, and that is, that's vital. Uh, thirdly, methodological integration, drawing both on qualitative and quantitative methods, and this is important for explanatory power. 
Fourthly, the measurement of trajectories, that we should not be looking just at point estimates to determine how well we're doing. We have to have a look at longer periods of time. That has come up in, in a number of sessions. And uh, fifthly, uh, multi-levels systems and uh, being sensitive to system dynamics. Sixth, looking at, and I've mentioned this in, in, in different ways here, uh, thinking about uh, temporal scale and looking at much longer trajectories, so that's related to the trajectories element. And this, the last one I want to mention, which in some ways may be the most vital when we think about what's been discussed here, is thinking about uh, targeted, targeted measurement. And here we're talking about how the concern for how different key groups, such as women, children, and the most vulnerable, living in the most fragile conditions, respond to and require a particular set of, set of resources. And I think um, what this means is it's not a simple process of, of disaggregating your data. It means that in the front end, you need to think about measurement elements that need to be there to, to, to deal appropriately with those populations. And I think this last point uh, raises the question is that uh, we may need to amend our familiar resilience question, resilience of what to what, uh, so we ask instead resilience of what to what and, and for whom. So thank you. Great, Mark. I won't deny anybody their applause today. Thank you. <laughs> but I do want to follow up with a question. So clearly it's hard to do justice to the work that uh, the technical working group has done in, in five minutes. And there are some you know, real, real advances in terms of the thinking, the principles, and, and some measurement frameworks. Uh, but one thing that came up clearly the other day when we had our group meeting was that there's impatience from practitioners for clear guidance, tools, you know, tell us what to measure, how to measure it, when to measure it. And I know that's part of the plan, but if you could t sort of give people a, a sense of when and what to expect that is oriented towards practitioners. Okay. Yeah, thank you. The, um, yeah, the when question, when are you going to have something? We re regularly get questions, we're launching a baseline, what can you tell us? We're launching a baseline next month, can you give us our indicators? And I think what we're aiming toward here, recognizing the contextual complexity of, of resilience, is that we're not aiming to, to produce a set of indicators. What we are aiming to do is to produce a set of criteria to tell you whether or not you have the right set of indicators for a particular setting. So it's not meant to be prescriptive, it is meant to be generative, and it is, it is meant to have a, a, a kind of a quality assurance mechanism, if we could use that, that phrase, that draws on the substantial resilience literature. Uh, as to when, um, I twitch even when I speak <laughs> about this deadline because it's not entirely my decision, but I, I think the notional deadline is uh, that we're working toward is toward the end of this calendar year. Uh, whether that will be uh, the form of that, whether it will be a series of technical briefs that may be more modular and in some ways more useful, or it will be a tome-like document of multiple chapters that will be good for insulation in your north wall of your home, but <laughs> it may have, it's, it's unclear. So the accessibility issue and targeting the right elements is something we're working on.